Right, hello team. My name is Paul Kirkal. I am a strange mixture of teacher, artist and writer. I love writing books and art tutorials. I'm a teacher. I teach computer games art. I'm an artist. I draw on touchscreen, all sorts of devices, phone, tablet, interactive whiteboard, and I draw on sketchbook with ink. Now, first off, I would love to say thank you to the sponsors of Scottish Summit. Scriptrunner, DQ Global, Proximo 3, Redspire, Agilisys, Hitachi Solutions. Thank you all so much for helping make Scottish Summit this amazingly cool technological celebration. Now, like I said, I'm an artist and I'm a creative thinker. I tend to put creativity at the heart of any role or job or uh, scenario I am in. I like to think of possibilities. I like to think of alternatives. I like to think of improvements. I enjoy celebrating creativity in whatever I do. And that's partially because it is a creative muscle that I have spent my life honing and exercising. Probably the only bit that I, of my body that I have spent honing and exercising. But because of that, it is as natural to me as breathing. And if we look at the dictionary definition to the right of this slide, look at those synonyms. Look at that description, especially part two. Firms are keen to encourage creativity. And a few years ago and still now, a lot of companies were celebrating the fact that they wanted to hire, endorse and celebrate creative employees. If we look at this on the screen, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. Since the 1950s, it has been an understood part of education. We as educators, I am a teacher, want our students to remember what we've said, but not only to remember it, we're not teaching to rote, teaching to exam, we teach to understand, to apply, to analyze, to evaluate, and at the top of the tree, to create. Uh, there is a clear case for mental health positivity through creativity. Now it doesn't, it's not as simple this fixes that, obviously. But it has been shown that creative endeavours and creative outcomes can help somebody struggling with mental health, can help somebody struggling with anxiety. But what does that point to? What is that to do with? It's to do with this, the way our brain waves work. Now, theta is sleep, delta is deep sleep. Beta is when your brain is struggling with all the distractions and all the things it needs to think about and the things it does not need to think about. Alpha state, the alpha state, is where we are at our most creative, our most understanding, our most receptive. To learn in the alpha state is when you learn best. To problem solve in the alpha state is the best way of problem solving and to create. As an artist, we aspire to get to the alpha state to create, to come up with the things that we want to make and do. Now, this is the first thing I would like you to do. I'm hoping that you have access to paper, pencils, pens. Now in the other two sections I'm going to I'm going to draw with you but in this case I'd like to explain what I'd like you to do and then I will draw it. So first off can you on a piece of paper draw a circle as large as you can five seconds or so I'll count you down five four three two one And now, as quickly as you can, in the middle of that circle, can you write the number 100? Draw a big circle. In five seconds. 
in the middle of that circle write the number 100 and I asked you to draw this circle and I asked you to write this circle again on Twitter I am at Kerkal at K-E-R-C-A-L especially please tweet me the picture that you've drawn but I'm especially keen if your larger circle is terrible and your written circle is better if you've done that I would love to see it so please tweet it out so today's aims and objectives we will be looking at creativity hacks ways in which you might help yourself become more creative creativity software tools that can help you become more creative tools that you might find a joy in being creative with and hack one challenge your preconceptions i love sketchbooks i adore sketchbooks and it, it probably doesn't sound like much of a surprise i am an artist sketchbooks all that much and i have art students who also don't like sketchbooks or they feel uncomfortable with sketchbooks and it's the color of the paper or it's the the worry that they're going to get a page wrong or where do i start all these things so i'd like to suggest a couple of hacks start from the back pre-mark each page do not use white paper follow a theme Let's give you some examples. Now, these are my sketchbooks. This one's from uh, August 2019. I start from the back and then I drew more or less every day until I finished the pad. Why do I start at the back? I start at the back because when I was at school, and I was using exercise books, we were allowed to do our workings out at the back of a pad. And I did a lot of drawing in between my workings out. I feel comfortable drawing at the back, but some people are scared about the artistic journey, the, the drawn journey, start at a different space. It's a, a psychological trick. This pad is from December, 2020 follow a theme. I made, in this case, I made my own theme, the gingerbread, zombie gingerbread characters. Um, I don't know where the idea came from. I just liked the, the, the idea of it and I liked the gingerbread character. And I enjoyed it. Again, they're, they're good fun. It's just a, a 30 minute, half an hour, an hour sketch idea. Now, this pad is slightly different. Now, some people do things called bujos, bullet journals. This is my pad for January because I wanted to plan my year out a bit more thoroughly. So planuary was my January pad. I started, have started working out my months. This pad is following me through the year. It is my January pad, which is not just my January pad. It's my year pad. Start from the back. Pre-mark each page. Now I don't do this, but I do recommend it to some students. Uh, put a color wash on the pages. Put a little geometric mark on the pages. Um, I don't. I, I would never put page numbers on the pages. That would completely freak me out. But I like the idea of having something in there that I can do. And then lastly, uh, follow a theme. But most importantly of all of those things, number three, do not please do not use white paper now uh, this is a black paper pad which i've used gold and silver and white gel pen uh, and i like it i like the effect i like the firework nature the visual pop it's quite hard to plan something out in a black paper pad but some people it just opens it up and i like that the the, the pads that i suggest to my students more often than not is this a brown paper i've got to be careful this is my life drawing pad so this uh again it depends on the artwork it depends on the day it depends on what i want to achieve or do but brown paper pad drawing with in this case mauve and blue ink now occasionally i use a white highlight 
such as this. Again, to accentuate and to draw on it. But brown paper is the answer to some people's block. So we have been trained to start from the beginning. And if that is the thing that holds you up, don't start at the beginning, start at the end and work your way backwards. White paper is scotopically hostile. Think the dark side of the moon cover by Pink, Pink Floyd. If the prism is your eyeball and the white page is going into your eyeball, your mind is processing the rainbow of colours. Now, session two, art class two, and I'm going to go through this one with you. Now I know I'm using white paper here, that's because it's cheap. <laughs> and I go through a lot of photocopy paper, but that's different, that's not, that's not my ideal. I'd like you to do two things for me. The first is I'd like you to draw 15 to 20 circles on a page. Do not do it slowly. If you don't like the first page, recycle it, come back to it later. 15 circles, big, small, squashed, oval, rotated, overlapping. When you've done that, put that to one side. We're going to come back to that in a minute. The second page. I would like you to draw me a series of circles, but in specific places. I'd like you to draw me a circle at the top. I'd like you to draw me a circle underneath. I'd like you to draw me a circle below and a smaller circle below that. Below that, I'd like you to draw me a thin, a thin oval, wide, not particularly high. Lastly, I'd like you to draw me four circles attached to the base circle. One, two, three, four. Now let's go back to the first of those two pages. One area of creativity is to look at circles, look at clouds and see a picture. So I want you to look at these circles as if they are a cloud. Have a look, see what you can see. If you can't see anything, draw more circles. Or if you can't see anything, Draw a new page of circles, doesn't hurt, it's not a slow process. Now here I can see uh, a dog running after a ball, sort of. Here is the dog's head, actually I'm going to change pen so you can see it more clearly. Here is the dog's head. Here's the dog's tongue, uh, the dog's body, tail, and then the legs are sort of doing that speed blur here. And then you've got a football here. So I'm going to bring the eye down there. Now my intention was not to draw a dog, and it, uh, my, my intention in these things is never to know what I'm going to draw, to always to come out with something separate and different. This one, I do this with all my students, and it might sound like a childish uh, children's book illustration, but I like it because we start with circles that anyone can take on board and succeed at, and at that point it is for you to play with and enjoy. This top half is the UFO and you can choose the UFO to be whatever you want it to be. Do you want loads of lights in it? Do you want triangles? 
between the metallic panels. What animal is the alien going to be abducting? Is it happy? Is it going off on an exciting adventure? Or is it terrified and scared? Because it is not overly happy with being taken away from the farm. Is it taking the animal with a traditional spotlight? Or is it doing it with a claw? Or a robot arm? Or what? How is it? Uh, uh, taking away the animal and then lastly what sort of alien is it does it have tentacles for a mouth how many eyes does it have and so on Is there a background? Now this is a picture that I feel comfortable that people can draw with limited setup, limited foundation. I'm going to come back to this picture in a short while. Now we have never had so many options to create artwork, to create imagery to visually express ourselves on phone on android i use art rage more than anything else i use art flow infinite painter infinite design i use snapseed to edit my photos i use quick to put my videos together on ios i would use procreate pocket i'd also use art rage as well which is available on both platforms on tablet again i'm android based generally ArtRage all the way. I love that application. On iOS, Procreate is probably the one that I'd use the most on that ecosystem. But ArtRage, again, is, is, is my favourite art app for reasons that I'll get into later. On computer, I primarily use Paint3D. But I also use WebCME, ArtRage, Critter, Blender and so on. And on traditional formats where well, you've already seen I love sketchbooks. I love fountain pens, water brushes and water soluble pencils. On a phone, on a tablet and on a laptop I always use a stylus. Now I recommend the thumbs up brush stylus on eBay or microfiber styli and both you can get for less than five pounds. And I recommend these for these reasons. Ergonomics, we are used to drawing pens and pencils, so it's a known uh, uh, mechanical system for our bodies to, to get used to and to do. Precision, it's slightly easier to see the screen on a uh, using a stylus. And it's also, I'm anti-RSI, and I find that when I've used tablets and touchscreens, Oh, using finger, using touch, I find my arms, my wrists especially aching. So I prefer to use Styli for that reason. Now I'd like to show you an application on my phone and the way I might use it, the way I would teach it to somebody beginning to move on a creative journey. And again, I want people to be um, practicing creative outcomes in order to enhance the creative muscles and the creative neural pathways in their mind. This is ArtRage on mobile phone. Now the reason why I like it so much is because it's a fairly obvious and naturalistic user interface. The colours, it's fairly obvious how to pick a colour. Oh sorry, and this is a thumbs up brush stylus by the way. It's a microfiber tip on one end a paintbrush on the other end, it works as a paintbrush on the touchscreen. All of the tools look the same as you would expect in real life. A paintbrush looks like a paintbrush.
colors mix and merge as real paint would mix and merge the roller is my absolute favorite It's a beautiful app to use. I'm going to clear that layer. And I'm going to import a photo. Now, most artists learn by tracing. So I'm going to go to import image. I'm going to import a photo of myself. I'm going to enlarge it. So it's the same size as the canvas and click on tick to accept it. Now, on a layer above it, so I'm going to create a new layer, each blank layer is like a sheet of glass. If that is my artwork, that is my sheet of glass on top of it, I could still draw on that sheet of glass. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a marker pen. I'm just going to draw an outline quickly around my face. Now this could be any picture, a pet, um, a friend, a favourite foodstuff, whatever you wanted to colour in. A rose for Valentine's Day. And so on. Now I'm trying my hardest to make sure that the outlines overlap because I want to fill this in with different colours. When I'm happy with my outlines, I hide the original photo. I have a quick look to make sure the gaps are filled in. And again, this is one of the great things about digital art. It's quick, it's immediate. You can zoom and you can undo. Happy with that, so now I go to the fill bucket. There was a gap, and I can see that gap, so I undo, paintbrush, fill. There's another gap, where is that gap? Oh, because it was already done. I was doing the beard. I couldn't work that out myself. Right, and then I fill in the colours. can see another gap there. That gives me this myself, but in a slightly more interesting color palette. I've used importing a photo, tracing a photo, filling in, coloring in that photo. In this case, with a stylus, you don't need to have a stylus. You could use a, uh, you can use your finger. You can use any uh, pointing device that you can use on your phone. Uh, not. The app is called Art Rage. If I remember correctly, it's five pounds. I love this app. It's worth every penny. It is cheap. But you can get free art applications on Android and iOS. 
have a look around, there are some great ones, or talk to me on at Kirkal. Come say hi and I'll, I'll suggest some different ones. Now, finally, and I'm not apologising for that pun at all, I'd like to show you Paint 3D. It's free on Windows 10. I love this app. It just makes me smile so much. I'm just going to go to Paint and to Display. And that gives me this image. Now, in Paint 3D, we have got a range of tools that you can use to create 2D artwork. if you wanted to, and all the tools that are in Classic Paint are now in Paint 3D. That gives you that. Or you can use 3D tools, and this is where it gets more exciting. So making a 3D tree in Paint 3D. Copy, paste, rotate 90 degrees just to give it more volume and solidity. That gives me this. I can still draw on or colour in. 3D shapes, with stickers, or with the paint tools that I was using on the 2D canvas. And creating in Paint 3D is as simple as doodling and rotating, scaling, in this case, copying and pasting. However, I'd like you to show you something else. 3D clip art. And this is bringing creativity back to the, one of the simplest parts of being creative, juxtaposition. Now, I love Ninja Cat. Uh, and I love Ninja Cat for a couple of reasons. He's a great mascot. Or she is a great mascot. I don't actually know, it's just suddenly struck me. Ninja Cat is a great mascot. But it's also an engineering challenge. How can we create a great mascot? Oh, let's put two things together and see what we get. So in my case, I'm going to come up with duck. And hat. And I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for Viking Helmet. <laughs> Viking Duck. I'm going to lose the tree. I don't need the tree anymore. I'm going to lose the background. And I'm going to put that helmet on top of the duck. Now, Paint 3D relies on 3D space. You have to get used to the idea of where to put something in 3D. Which can take a little bit of practice to get perfect. But it does come eventually, trust me. That gives you this. Now, here's my duck. At the moment, it's swimming on the water, or I can have it standing on the ground. But I want more wings. So I go back to 3D shapes, I go for 3D doodle, and I draw a wing and then some more feathers. I select both, I copy, I paste, 
I flip. Now I've got much more of a winged duck. But again I can see that this is too far forwards. I want to move it backwards. That's this icon here. Move in Z space. There we go. Now this is fine and it's great and I love to this is a, a mental exercise what can I can come up with a Viking swan duck however I'm going to copy it and now I'm going to show why this has purpose and why this is useful and I'm going to paste it into Word now this loads in my 3d object that I've made in paint 3d into Word I can rotate it I can move it and I can put word wrap on. It doesn't have to be in Word objects that I've made. I can go to insert 3D models, uh, Viking helmet, insert word wrap, drag. And that gives me this, an illustrated story made with 3D objects that I can move, scale and rotate. Similarly, and you've already seen this, I can load it into Word, uh, into PowerPoint. Copy, PowerPoint, paste. That imports the object into PowerPoint So on slide one, I'm going to have it here. And you can copy and paste it again, or you can duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it. On slide two, I'm going to move it here and scale it up. Go to transitions, morph, and I get that. Now this again is whimsy and it's fun and it's playful. Well, just imagine if you inserted or if you loaded up a shark and you were doing a presentation on a shark and you wanted to show the different parts, the different fins, the gills, the mouth, the eyes. You could get lots of different pictures of this shark for your presentation or you could bring in one 3D model, rotate and morph. Now Microsoft also make a number of apps which have Windows Ink built in and they have a creative aspect to them. So for example Microsoft Whiteboard is a collaborative application where you can talk to uh, other people draw, write, create, illustrate, communicate together visually. It has a highlighter tool. I suggest you use the lighter colours first to spec out what it is that you want to draw. I want to draw the world. I want to draw an arrow. I want to say I am here. I would love to be here. Then I'm going to choose a darker pen, this time the felt tip pen, and I'm just going to draw in the outlines using the, the highlighter as a guide. Lastly, I'm going to go back to highlighter and pick colours which can colour in the picture that I want to discuss. We are talking about communication, about Zoom, about the chances to talk to people on different sides of the planet, for example. That is Microsoft Whiteboard. 
Similarly, OneNote also has drawing tools built in, Windows Microsoft Ink tools built in. Again, I suggest you start drawing with a highlighter pen. Draw the shapes that you want to come into your picture and then when you're happy with it, select another pen. This time a thick black ink outliner. And draw in the outlines. Lastly, today was announced Windows Microsoft Journal and it is a journaling application where you can use Windows Inc, a range of tools again. I'm still learning this myself, but it's got a very nice pencil tool. And this pencil tool reacts to pressure. So if I draw lightly, light shadow, dark, darker shadow. Now the problem it has is with this, for example, with shading, I draw a shadow in there, that's fine. But if I test, the way it deletes text and artwork is if you scribble over it like that. Well, that's also how I shade. So in this case, we need to crosshatch 45 degree lines, getting darker and darker and darker. Finally, shadow. Shadow, shadow. I'm going to use the highlighter pen to colour in my coffee cup if it'll allow me. And that gives me this. Now, if I was only going to pick one thing that I would suggest you do out of all these creative ideas and creative Kickstarters, I would pick the most antithetical choice of all that I've gone through. I would suggest a fountain pen. And if you want to do so, I would suggest an ink colour that is that you feel an affinity to, that brings you joy. This, for example, is Diamine's Dragon Blood. It's a dark red colour, not quite black, but very dark red, but it's got gold uh, shimmer all the way through it. When you look at what you've written and you twist it around in the light, you get a lovely gold Mexican wave go through it. How cool is that? Why? Why am I suggesting a fountain pen? Well, it's because um, to me, creativity is about immediacy. It is about neurons firing off. It's about ideas traveling through your brain at the speed of thought. And at that point, I want my ideas in a sketchbook quickly. There is something about a creative idea that is fleeting. And if you do not bottle that magic quickly, it can go, it can be forgotten. And I don't like that. So I like a sketchbook on me at all times. We stare at screens so much. To me, creativity is enhanced with paper. I don't know what it is. There is a, I'm sure there is a psychological part to that, but I love, I just love a sketchbook, a pen writing. It is to me the most concise and immediate way of capturing my creativity. Now with that in mind, let's go back to the PowerPoint. 
if you can buy a fountain pen, a water brush pen, an ink colour you feel an affinity to, please do so. And then play. This is a water brush pen. Now again, you can use a, a paintbrush and water. I use a water brush pen because I can stick it in my pocket and carry it with me all the time, and I do. And then all I'm going to do is just wet the outside edges of my picture. And that's it. And the picture becomes, I think, prettier, more interesting, visually more pleasing. And all I'm doing is wetting the outside edges. And that's it. A water brush pen, a fountain pen and paper. For me it's the, the, the simplest method of getting nice artwork, nice ideas, nice, nice thought processes uh, more immediately. Now when I do my sketchbook this is exactly the way that I do my sketchbook. Occasionally the only thing that I've done differently uh, in my sketchbook is I'll do the colour wash and then I'll draw over it again to give myself darker outlines, more colour wash over again. Repetition. That's the only thing that I've done differently to this picture. I will carry on with this picture later and film that just so you can see that. I'll put that out on Twitter as well. If you'd like some recommended reading on creativity, uh, on the, the mechanics and the processes, I recommend these four books. The Secret Lives of Colour is about colour theory, colour philosophy, colour history, the basics of colour, colour matching, all those sort of things. In Montparnasse is a beautiful book about the meetings of the surrealists and the cubists and the brutalists in Montparnasse in France. It's a fascinating book, but it's also deeply interesting to see how creative people used uh, parlour games and tricks and conversations to, in uh, to increase their creativity. What are you looking at is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy of Art. I love it. I've got both the book and the audiobook. It's a fabulous work. And again, it talks about why people created, what was the driver for these things, and what the viewer saw as well. And finally, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, which is a book about psychological tricks and tips to become a better artist. So finally, all I can say is thank you. Please keep in touch. If you draw any of these pictures, please share them. I'm on Instagram. I'll be sharing artwork uh, based around this talk um, there. I'm on Twitter. I'll be answering questions if there are any. LinkedIn, I'm on there as well. But from myself and also from Scottish Summit, Scottish Summit 2021, and I'm at Kirkhall. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking part.